All right, well, it's great to be here. Um, Dredden Brown, CEO of Praxis. Um, first to start, uh, I wanted to introduce myself. I'm from Santa Barbara, California. I grew up surfing. Um, and I, I spent really my whole childhood you know, on the beach and, uh, and, and ended up homeschooling to travel around the world, compete in surf contests, which afforded me this like, kind of interesting opportunity to have uh, a different educational experience. I was homeschooled, um, and I, I was really interested in American colonial history. Uh, my family uh, came to America from Ireland. Uh, they fought in the Revolutionary War. They built a fort. Um, they participated in the Pennsylvania Constitutional Convention. And so this story of building new cities, of building new places, of building new countries was something that I thought about you know, from a very young age and was able to really dive into as a teenager and, and, you know, frankly, like, I was, I was able to spend a lot of time learning about charter cities and seasteading and these different ideas when they were very nascent. Um, it's me. Um, and so I, I ended up... Let's go back. I ended up moving to New York when I was 18 because I wanted to, uh, you know, pursue this sort of question is, you know, of how does one build, how does one build a new city? Um, you know, in a sort of professional context, I, I went to intern for a fund called Pershing Square, um, an activist hedge fund. Um, we invested in, in a company called Howard Hughes, which built uh, three cities um, in the United States with over 100,000 residents. Um, I, I left and did technology investing for a couple of years and then got a grant from uh, Tyler Cowen through EV to study the development of new cities in Africa and the Middle East. Um, and I, I learned a lot about um, you know, the, the Dubai International Financial Center and different sort of special economic zone frameworks that were super helpful in terms of developing new cities. Um, I, I wanted to do something along those lines and eventually um, came back to the US uh, right when 2020 started uh, and, and COVID hit. And I was sort of forced you know, to confront this question of how do I work on building a new city, you know, stuck in this tiny apartment in New York, can't go anywhere. How do you build a, a city from your apartment? That was sort of the premise, that was the question. Um, and the answer I came to was like, you know, people move to cities to plug into social networks. Um, and if we could build a community around this charismatic concept of, uh, you know, building a new city, of building a new city around uh, an idea, an idea of a more vital way of life, um, that that might draw, you know, a lot of really compelling people to, um, to, to the effort, to the project, and that those people would represent a demand proof point uh, that we could fundraise against. And that was sort of the premise, that was the idea, um, and, and that's what we ended up working on. So we launched Praxis, um, we, we decided as a group that we wanted to build a city in the Mediterranean, um, and... Uh, and, and really develop this sort of philosophy along those lines, that you know, we're going to build a new city on the Mediterranean uh, focused on technology, focused on uh, you know, building a, a community of, of people who want to build technology companies in a special economic zone that, that really facilitates that in one of the most beautiful places in the world. Um, yeah, so this is our, our mission. Um, we were able to build a team um, that has a lot of experience. We hired the, the former CEO of of Howard Hughes, the company we invested in at Pershing, uh, who built three cities in the US with over 100,000 residents. Uh, we work with two former prime ministers, and we have a bunch of other super talented people on the team. Um, we were able to raise money from some really great investors, um, you know, Paradigm Bedrock, a bunch of great angels, um, and a large uh, pension fund that um, you know, has a $100 billion real estate fund. Um, and so in, in 2021, we launched, uh, we, we launched this community um, and really were focused on building a new culture um, around this, this idea of building a new city. Um, we, we built the community to uh, you know, 12,000 12, members. We have 250 residents that have committed to move. Um, we have a wait list of almost 50,000 people. And those people met up all around the world and you know, hosted events with one another, um, you know, made memes, messed around on the internet, uh, created culture, and, and you know, many started companies together. Um, a lot of people live together in the community. There actually have been a few marriages that have come out of Praxis, which has been pretty cool. Um, yeah, and so I guess, yeah, built this really big community. It's pretty awesome. Got to travel around the, around the world for a couple of years meeting with people who wanted to 
you know, live in a new city and, and sort of explore this idea together. And then once we raised money, we, we went back to all the founders in the community and talked to them about what it would actually take for them to set up operations in a new city. Um, really, it turned out that, that the core things were regulatory change and economic incentives. Um, that if we could uh, basically aggregate demand from a bunch of different industries, we could talk to a bunch of different founders from a bunch of different industries and figure out sort of like what policy changes would unlock their willingness to move to a new place. Um, that if we could sum up uh, the, the investment amounts of all of those companies moving to a new country, um, it'd be quite a, a lot of foreign direct investment flowing into that country. Um, and that we could go to a country with that offer um, of you know, bringing all these super talented people uh, and all these companies on the basis of these regulatory changes and economic incentives, um, and then wrap that sort of like foreign direct investment in a narrative of a beautiful green new city um, that'll invest in social, uh, social goods for the local community, that it would become like a really compelling political narrative for, um, you know, for, for that country and for that community. Um, and then on that basis, we got uh, our first offer from a government to bring our community of tens of thousands of talented people, the companies that want to move on the basis of these incentives, um, and this story of you know, building a really compelling future for, uh, you know, for the community, for the country. Um, we, we got an offer from a country to set up our city uh, you know, within their borders on land that they would contribute for equity in the project, um, some of the infrastructure financed by them uh, in a regulatory sandbox in their country. Um, so that was super exciting. Um, right now, we're working on soliciting further offers from other governments. We're going to do more than one project ultimately, but um, you know, we haven't committed to our location for the first project yet. Um, but we're, we're going to be, uh, begin development in, in uh, 2024, like the beginning of next year, um, with our, our you know, development team. And then um, you know, we'll have 10,000 residents move to the city in 2026, which is like pretty close. Um, a lot of the sites that we're looking at are not just greenfield sites. They're, they're actually sites that have some infrastructure already developed. In some cases, there are, um, there are already structures in place. So we're able to accelerate the sort of timeline to getting people moved in um, pretty dramatically. Um, the other thing I'd say is like there's this question of like how do you finance new cities? I think sort of like the quanta of like sort of like kind of capital you need to get to a V1, you know, with the, with the city is like quite large. Like if you're a hard tech startup, maybe it's like 100 mil. If you're a city, you really need like a billion dollars to, to build like a phase one that's like, you know, meaningful. Um, and so how do you raise a billion dollars? And the, the answer that we came to, if we sort of circle back to the beginning, is you know, building you know, sort of a community first, doing this sort of, these sort of new city projects demand first. So we built this very large community, got these incremental demand proof points where people started you know, putting down uh, deposits or committing to make deposits on a house in the city. And then on that basis, we were able to unlock capital from uh, you know, institutions that were excited about uh, you know, the economics and the story and so on um, on the basis of, of these early demand proof points, which are uh, very uncommon with you know, new city projects, getting demand you know, proof points before there's even a site or a country announced. That's, you know, it's like never happened, I would say. Um, TAM's really large, it's fun to talk about big numbers. Um, right now we have, a, we have this program called Steel Visa. So um, if you want to become a, a member of Praxis, if you want to move to one of our cities to become a resident, um, you can apply for a Steel Visa. It's my co-founder, Charlie. Um, he looks great on his Steel Visa. The, the idea is it's a membership card now. Once we sign and announce our deal with the host government that'll host the city, um, the steel visa will become a golden visa. It'll become uh, you know, a, a real golden visa that gives you uh, rights to, to work and to live in the country where we're ultimately going to locate Praxis. Um, and yeah, so you know, apply if interested. Um, and you get a metal card that looks like that. That's Praxis. Um, oh, wow. three seconds left. Cool. Thank you. <laughs>